Cole Simpson, Kara Welker, and a team here at Stanford has developed a very simple elastic mechanism to improve the economy of ru running. Kara is pictured here wearing an exotendon, a simple spring that connects her legs and allows her to run with reduced energetic cost. Now, reducing the energetic cost of running is hard. It's a long-sought goal dating back to a patent that we found in 1890. Only in the past few years have devices been developed to help achieve that goal, and you can see those down here. Now, how is the cost of locomotion reduced in nature? It's reduced by having parallel passive tissues. So if you look in this shark here, they have muscle, but then they have collagen that is in parallel with their muscles that helps them store and return elastic energy. Same is true for insects, for some galloping animals here, for birds. But in humans, you see less passive elastic tissue in parallel with muscle. So we thought maybe we should be able to, number one, compute the energetic cost of running, see how much is being spent in each muscle, and then in the simulations, include a passive elastic element connecting the legs to see how that affected metabolic cost. Now, we did some preliminary simulations in a class. Some students were interested in modeling and simulation of movement. They put a spring between and they saw, indeed, it did save energetic cost. Cole Simpson and other colleagues in the lab actually built what he called an exotendon out of surgical tubing, very inexpensive device, and went running with it, and it felt fantastic. The swinging of his legs felt much easier. So a simple spring, we thought, might reduce the energetic cost. We had hints from simulations where we could add the spring, and then here's Kara uh, wearing the spring here, and you see it's attached to her shoes with carabiners, and when the legs are separated, the exotendon generates force. And you can see that here. What I'm plotting is just the spring force, which goes to zero when the legs are together, comes up when the legs are apart, and then back down to zero. So you get this cyclic loading and unloading of the spring. When the legs are separated, it's pulling them back together. And when they're together, it doesn't do anything to interfere with the motion. So we tested this on a number of runners. Here's one of the excellent runners from Stanford's uh, track team. On the right, running without the exotendon and running on the left. I'm sorry, running on the left without the exotendon and the right with the exotendon. And it changed her gait. She had shorter strides. And we're also estimating her metabolic cost. And what we found is once people learned to use the device, they ran with less energy, energy expenditure. Let me show you some of the results. So the exotendon we found did indeed reduce the metabolic cost. So what I'm plotting here is the metabolic power, where above a positive number is less efficient, below is more efficient, so the negative means we're saving energy. On the first day, and each dot is a particular person who used the device, on the first day, some people were less efficient, some people were more efficient, but fortunately, a couple of these were early in our experiment. We thought, well, maybe we are going to get something. On that same day, we gave people a second try, and here we got a statistically significant decrease in energetic cost. Some were still a little higher, some didn't change much, but a couple more saved energy. Now, interestingly, when we brought them back for the second day, everybody but one was able to save energy. And on that second trial, the second day, on average, there was a 6.4% reduction, but a highly significant reduction across the group. Now, a 6.4% percent reduction in energy consumption is quite meaningful. That is a massive reduction when you can think of it in the mile time or a marathon time, how much more energy you'd expend or less energy you'd expend. Where does that come from? What I'm plotting here is the spring force versus gait cycle. Remember, we get spring forces when the legs are separated, none when they're together, 
and then spring force when they're together. The spring moment about the hip is plotted here, and you see the spring is generating a moment. At the same time, the peak muscle moment occurs. And with the spring in place, there's a reduced uh, requirement for the muscles to generate a hip moment. You see that here at 0% of the gait cycle, so you're getting some of the moment from the spring and less moment from muscles compared to the without exotendon condition. You see the same thing here. Here's without exotendon, with exotendon, and the moment you're getting from the exotendon. So you'd see it's saving force generating requirement in the muscle, and that's resulting in increased energetic savings. Now the story's a little bit more complex than that, and you'll have to read the paper to get the details. But I wanted to point out that it took 43 of the world's fastest runners to break the two-hour marathon record, a fantastic achievement. It was achieved by a decade-long uh, Nike development effort to create the Vaporfly. And that Vaporfly is an excellent shoe that saves you about 4% in metabolic cost. And of course, the pacers in front of the person who broke the two-hour record were saving air drag. With even a roughly tuned exotendon, we were saving 6%, more than the Nike Vaporfly. And optimally tuned in some of our runners were saving 8 to 10 or even 12%. That might enable you to break the two-hour marathoner. So if you are an amazing runner and you want to give this a try, I'd say go for it. So that's the story that closed out our muscle-driven running. Thank you for uh, joining through all of this. And I'll, I'll move to chapter 13, where I'll give you the path forward, what's happening next in the future of biomechanics.